Hello and welcome to another episode of Breaking Mayberry, yelling at television through time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, you see, like, the mask go up and, before he does it, and then the radio voice comes out. It's the best. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> like, his eyes super dilate for a second as, like, he channels some, like, long-dead DJ. Yes. It's, it's like a whole scanners thing. If I do it too much, my head will actually explode. <laughs> <laughs> I love when there's someone else in the room with me that can, like, like just, just witness You're, this physical... You weren't alone. I experienced yeah. it, too. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Marty Schneider. I'm the mean host, Dan Ludwig. Uh, and we have a special guest today. Uh, today, in today's episode, we are talking about pickles. Yeah. And uh, if you're a fan of the Andy Griffith Show, you already know what we're, episode we're talking about. It's literally called The Pickle Story. It is a big deal among Andy Griffith fans. It like comes in pretty regularly in like the top five in all different polls. And Introduce our guest. Well, I'm... <laughs> 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 So we brought in somebody who literally wrote the book on pickling and other kinds of fermentation. And she'll correct me and tell me that the pickles that we're talking about today are not the pickles that she talked about. But Peter Piper over here. Introduce our guest. <laughs> the book is called Ferment Your Vegetables, A Fun and Flavorful Guide to Making Your Own Pickles, Kimchi, Kraut, and More. And our guest is Amanda Pfeiffer. Amanda, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Sorry for that extremely long walk. I enjoyed that long walk. <laughs> It's a big buildup. Amanda, before we get into this, can you uh, tell us about your, your – tell us about this book. Tell us about any other pop blogs, stuff. Sure. You know, promote whatever you want right now. Yeah, so I've been blogging under the name Fickle with a PH um, since 2011, and I teach fermentation classes of all kinds, kombucha, yogurt, cultured butter, fermented vegetables, pickles, kraut, kimchi, the whole shebang. Um, miso, lots of crazy things. Um, and I also, um, I'm forgetting what my actual job is. I wrote that cookbook, uh, that cookbook for venture vegetables. I'm working on a proposal for a second book, which I don't have a publisher for yet. Um, well, I haven't finished the proposal, so it would be impossible for me to have a uh, publisher. And yeah, that's, that's my gig. I teach fermentation. Amanda, where can our listeners buy this book? Um, any place you would buy a book, okay, <laughs> it should be there. <laughs> we'll have links in the show notes. For instance, book Amazon. Stores. Check them out. <laughs> yes, also bookstores. Um, yeah. We recommend bookstores. Yeah. This episode of, of Breaking Mayberry is sponsored by <laughs> books. There's a little rainbow that like, goes across the screen like, books, check them out. <laughs> Books are good. That's our jingle for it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so those are your bona fides. Yes. That, yeah. So yeah. That's uh, me. All we really needed was somebody who knows a little bit more about pickle and pickling than we do. Uh, I don't know if I, if y'all have seen it yet on our YouTube page. There is a video of Dan and I attempting to make pickles. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, I think Amanda's shaking her head at us right now. I assume that she watched it. I'm not judging. Oh, you okay, cool. We brought you on here to judge. <laughs> That's what you're here for. Uh, all right, so today we're talking pickles. Yeah. Um, specifically, we're talking about Season 2, Episode 11, The Pickle Story, written by Batman Detective Harvey Bullock, uh, and it airs December 18th, 1961, and it is directed by Swabber of Beanies, Bob Sweeney. Traveling tonic salesman, Bob Sweeney. And here is our one-sentence summary from Wikipedia. Andy and Barney replace Aunt B's bad-tasting homemade pickles with store-bought pickles, but find themselves in a real pickle. Oh, some Wikipedia writer oh, thinks they're real fuck clever. You, Wikipedia. <laughs> find themselves in a real pickle when she decides to enter her pickles in a contest at the county fair. Uh... Look, let's just do this right now. You can take a drink every time we say pickle today. <laughs> it's going to get... You're going to kill one yeah, of somebody, them. Somebody's going to die. Please do your pickle backs responsibly. 
Ah, oh, Christ. You're going to kill one of our listeners with, like, a lower body weight. Like, if anyone is, like, 140 or lower, they're a dead person. Do they have picklebacks in the other parts of the country? I didn't know that picklebacks were a thing until I moved here. Same. Uh, if, if you don't know what a pickleback is, it's basically a shot of whiskey with a pickle juice chaser. I, I think it's like, is it, no, it's not a Midwestern thing, because you're from the Midwest. I never knew about I it. I thought it was like a Midwestern thing that, like, uh, slowly made it, or wait, it might be I a, think it's an Eastern Seaboard thing, at least. It might solely be a Philly thing. I've explained what a pickleback is to my family in Massachusetts 30 times, and they react with just horror every <laughs> single time. And I'm, I've, like, had, like, whiskey and pickle juice in front of them, like, just try it, just, it's, it's fine, it's great, try it. It and is great. Yeah, they act like I'm asking them to drink, like, <laughs> detergent from under the sink. We do have here in southeastern Pennsylvania a rich history of pickling mm -hmm. uh, from the, the Amish and the Pennsylvania Dutch, which I learned from that Alton Brown episode mm -hmm. about pickling, which was my preparation for this episode. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> damn, that's what we should have done. We should have done picklebacks while we were on air. Damn it, uh... But what we do have here are... I mean, a, how long do we have the room for? <laughs> there is probably some whiskey in that fridge. Yeah. Um, what we do have here is a bottle, a jar of pickles that Dan and I made using the very bad pickle recipe that Aunt B uses on this show, supposedly. It came from the Aunt B's Country Kitchen cookbook, <laughs> which is the thing that I own. What do you guys think? Should we do the episode first and then get into the pickle tasting? That's what I feel like we should do. All right. Uh, I kind of want to do the pickle tasting first just so that we can kind of, like, yell. Okay. Yeah. Also, I, I have the strong <laughs> suspicion that this is going to be like we're doing ayahuasca. Like, we're going to have done such a bad job that we're going to, like, hallucinate violently. Wait, I have one question about this, though, before – and you can tell me if I'm getting ahead of myself. But I am a little confused because why would – like, the whole premise of the episode is that her pickles taste like ass. Right. Yeah. So why did they publish a recipe? It's like, <laughs> here, make trash food. The back of – I mean, first off, the entire – book is full of trash food it's basically like a church cookbook that they just threw andy griffith character names onto but i was flipping through it the other day and there is recipe for like fried owl there is a, a, a raccoon recipe there is something that calls for pokeweed and by the way if you look up pokeweed that is toxic you should not eat it you might be able to like make it palatable if you boil it twice to leach out all the toxins but yeah there's shit in this book that will kill you remember this <laughs> This recipe that we used called for alum powder. Yeah. A, a thing that people use as a vagina retightener. <laughs> a, vi a vagina. Wow. A vaginal Botox. But, but, yeah, yeah. Again, again, do not put alum powder in your vagina. <laughs> mm -hmm. If there, we have one contribution to society, it's getting... If we pre can prevent one person from putting that powder in their vaginas, we've, we've had a net good in this podcast. Uh, so, yeah. Actually... So, but the, so with this... The the recipe was such dog shit that it was like, all right, put in normal pickling stuff and then spices. And uh, I think okay. spices is like the room for like where you where she would fuck it up. Right. So it, was, it did seem like that as yeah. Clara made commentary on her. So let's let's her own tasting of. Well, let's do Aunt the Aunt opening pickles. scene. Let's do the opening scene. We open up uh, in Andy and Aunt B's kitchen. Aunt B is hard at work making some pickles, which apparently are just well known for being terrible. And everyone knows this. Yeah. But she's aware of it. She's like, oh, yes, I'm just making some crappy pickles that everyone hates. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and Clara Johnson, her friend, walks in uh, and she's going to, she's got a jar of pickles of her own that she wants Aunt B to taste because she's about to enter them in the like the big annual pickle contest. And Clara is like kind of a mean girl about this. She says something like, like, oh, Aunt B, you know what you should do? You should definitely enter those pickles of yours into the contest. And Aunt B says, no, I'm not going to do that. I've tried ten times. I've lost ten times. And Clara says, corrects her with, eleven. And fuck you, Clara. Does drop fuck you. Yeah, agreed. Does dropping off the jar of pickles qualify as a power move? Oh, it's a total it's power like, move. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I know, you, I know you suck at this thing. I just thought I'd come by and just do it in front of you. I heard you were currently doing this. Yeah. Now here's my better version. I, I heard you were failing over here. <laughs> I just wanted to, what, what, wanted to come into your kitchen and do a little backflip for yeah. you. Yeah, that was a gnarly move. Yeah. And then she starts to give, like, just a 
tiny bit of advice. The tiny bit of advice is maybe you should boil the brine for two seconds longer. Maybe you should add fresher spices. Maybe you should do everything differently. She, she says at one point, like, use fresh pickles. Like, <laughs> or, like, like, use fresh cucumber. Like, stop using moldy old <laughs> vegetables on this. So, Amanda, question for you. Yep. Um... Again, knowing full well that we're talking vinegar pickles, not fermentation, which is your field of expertise. Yes. What, what are the easiest ways to screw up pickling? What can make a pickle bad? I think this was the crux of why the episode didn't work for me. <laughs> like, none. I mean, <laughs> I, I think the question is, do you like the way pickles taste? If you do, then they're probably going to be fine. And if you don't, they're not going to be good. Like, <laughs> it's vinegar and spices. So, yeah, okay, maybe they could use a spice blend you don't like. But that's really it. Like, it's there's not a question of bad. It's like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I was very confused. It's a binary thing? You either have pickles or you don't have pickles? I mean, in my experience, like, yes, that is just true. So... For fermented pickles, there might be a little bit more leeway. There could be some stuff that Clara didn't call out. So sometimes in the pickling process, the reason they add alum to vinegar pickles is to, like, tighten them up so they don't, like, get hollow pickle syndrome and they're crisp. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, really? Yes. <laughs> This so is, it this actually is a real tightens thing. your penis. <laughs> Do not put alum powder in your penis. Can you just like throw alum powder on anything you need? Tighten? I just need it smaller. <laughs> this just lid like, doesn't quite fit this jar. Throw some alum on it. Eliminate crow's feet by just whipping alum powder at it. <laughs> I, it's reverse WD-40. Yeah. <laughs> just restating for the record, I'm not a canned pickle expert. I'm a fermented pickle expert. So that I haven't canned in years. I do everything fermented now, but... If memory serves, that's what the alum does. So, yes, you could have a bad texture if they were, like, floppy (laughs) or kind of soft (laughs) or hollow on the inside. That would be a bad pickle, I think. (laughs) So, But nobody was saying that. They were all tasting them and then acting like it was something about the flavor. The flavor is white vinegar. (laughs) Like, do you like the flavor of white vinegar or not? Would you say that the biggest issue with pickles is flaccidity? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Nobody wants a flaccid pickle. (laughs) Uh, oh, I didn't realize how immature this is going to get. <laughs> you know, well, just the entire time. We don't know each other, so. <laughs> why, are, why are all the Aunt B episodes the dirtiest ones, <laughs> even when they're not? We, <sighs> oh, God, yeah, the entire time we're going, we're going to keep inadvertently describing pickles that sound like cocks. <laughs> this is gonna it's go pretty go. hard to talk about cucumber, cucumber pickles without getting to cocks. <laughs> I say this as an expert. <laughs> right. Do like all like conventions between people in the industry just develop into like just devolve into snickering. There's after, a fair like, amount of years. that, yes. Wait, Unless you... you're amongst the Amish and then no. <laughs> Have you been to a fermentation convention? Are there like, like I've I've been to a number of fermentation festivals, yes. And Am- residencies and the whole shebang, yeah. Are the Amish like a click there? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the Amish actually for a long time now have made vinegar pickles and not fermented pickles, so they don't tend to be around. I've actually taught Amish people how to make fermented pickles, <laughs> which is always a little awkward. I'm like, I know this is your hundreds of years family tradition, but yeah, let me I- just put a new spin on it for you. <laughs> I think I feel like you're like one of twenty people to teach an Amish person anything. It's true. I actually teach in Lancaster a fair amount, so I do have Amish students for my various classes. Funny, oh, but yeah. they do not make cock references, <laughs> and they can't listen to this, so they can't be offended. Not even like we can after say whatever rum- we want about them. Honestly, they'll never hear this. Not even like after Rum Springer, where they like <laughs> they come back and they're like, guys, things can also be cocks. <laughs> <laughs> If, if a thing is shaped like that, you can make a joke about it. <laughs> Our conversation just became so much easier. Apologies to any Amish people on Rumspringa. I respect your culture. Oh, yeah. The, the, the Rumspringa ones will find out and bring it back to the community. <laughs> I, I just, I'm imagining that, like, you've lived in that community your entire life, and the first thing you do is go and, A, watch an Andy Griffith episode, <laughs> and, B, listen to an Andy Griffith podcast. <laughs> And bring that back with you. Waste like five percent of your rum spring. <laughs> Look, I've been into the outside world. It's just two idiots yelling about a black and white television show. I, we're not missing anything, guys. <laughs> All right, so uh, the next scene we're at the jail, right? Uh, Andy and Barney are just getting ready for lunch, essentially. Yeah. Uh, 
they're just like humming as they do paperwork. <laughs> like they're doing like a weird song. It's a really like cute little like whistle while you work. They just kind of like harmonize together as they're just like cleaning up and filing some paperwork and vamp, 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 vamp. We only have ten pages of script. Yeah, <laughs> do guys do literally anything? <laughs> uh... it's, it's pretty much that, right? That's roll camera and uh, uh harmonize for a couple. It, it's like it's like. Francis Bavier, who played Aunt B, missed her cue, and they were just stalling for a few seconds. They didn't remember, they forgot that this isn't live, you can stop and wait. <laughs> it really has that vibe of, like, guys, we only have enough tape to do one take of everything. Yeah. So, Aunt B comes in, uh, and she's brought the boys lunch, as she is wont to do. And remember, like, one of the key points of this entire series is that Aunt B is a good cook. Yeah. Now, we've looked through that recipe, and I don't see that recipe book, and I don't see how that's true. Her fried chicken recipe is literally fry some chicken. I like that we read that months ago, and you're still mad <laughs> about so it. I'm so mad about it. It's literally like like just just chicken, and then you fry Flour it. Flour and yeah, Not even salt. like salt. No, not there, even there salt. No salt. Yeah. Anyway, so she comes in, she brings him lunch, and then she says, oh, and look what else I brought you boys. Some pickles. And they have looks on their face like someone just dropped a baby. Yeah. Like, <gasps> yeah. Just sheer terror in their eyes. It's uh, it's like, I brought you sandwiches and also chips and also, and it's like she's withdrawing a gun to <laughs> shoot them both. Like, it's like she just dropped the thing of flowers and there's a machine gun in her hand. <laughs> yeah, she knew what she was doing. Yeah. I think I- she knew it was up. That's the question throughout this entire thing is, does Aunt B know what her own pickles taste like? Has she ever tasted one of her? That is, okay, so she says in the first thing, she's like, my pickles make everyone around me miserable. Why is she making them and giving them to the people that she supposedly loves? Why is she making eight quarts? Yeah. It's like. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, if there's one thing, like, that you like that no one else does. Fine, you make a little batch for yourself, whatever. Why did you make eight? I can give you a boring and true answer to that question. Oh, please. Okay, so in canning recipes, um, unlike fermented recipes, you have to follow really strict guidelines because otherwise you will give yourself botulism and kill everybody you know. Um, This is not true in fermented pickling. This is only true in canned pickling. Cool. But so most of the recipes were written, and this is still true today, most of the recipes were written for a time when it was like, preserving the harvest mm. so they're all like massive batches of pickles like like eight quarts is like a small batch of pickles for canned pickles like that's not a ton so creating like a small scale pickle recipe would require like a lot of trial and error that and the error would be botulism <laughs> i think so- it's more understanding the, like the basic science and there are like bloggers that do that today and do it really well but yes so let's say Back hypothetically then, no. there were two guys who didn't know how to make pickles <laughs> And they took a recipe for six quarts and just divided everything by six. And then they made those pickles badly. Am I, are we gonna die? Let me ask you, I'm... I have a, I have an important question about that. Were these supposed to go into the refrigerator, these refrigerator pickles? These went right in the fridge. Then that's fine. Okay. The canning part is the part where it gets, where it gets questionable. Okay. Uh, so you, the, you watched the video. You watched it through this. I didn't see the video. Okay. No, I did okay. not. Okay. So, uh, follow up question. What is botulism and what does it do to your body? <laughs> okay, botulism is when a bacterium that lives in the soil that's cool. on everything we eat all the time has the right conditions to create spores. The spores cool. are the most toxic substance known to man, and a very, very small amount of them will kill you. The reason that they're dangerous in canning, sorry for anybody who's really bored by science, <laughs> but like this is just true, is because um, low pH is something they don't like, high salt is something they don't like. But their natural predator are lactic acid bacteria, and that's what makes fermented vegetables sour. When you're just adding vinegar and then when you're boiling like crazy, you mm-hmm. kill all the lactic acid bacteria, but the botul- Clostridium botulinum is the name of the bacterium, that survives at really, really high temperatures. So cool. if you don't do everything exactly right, it can still be alive in there where in all of its natural competitors or predators, I guess if you want to say that, are dead. Okay, so... We're just going to take a brief break from talking about the episode because, Marty, should we do this? Should we eat these? Wait, okay, let me just ask this. What you did was chop up this cucumber, you boiled it in hot vinegar, you put spices in, and then you put it in a jar and put it in the fridge, right? Yeah, pretty much. You're fine. Okay. okay. That's what I would call a refrigerated pickle, not a canned pickle, and that's you do it, that's not going to run that risk. Okay, cool, because I'm like, we're probably not – we probably wouldn't die from it, but – 
I don't want this to be how I die. No, like, canned pickles are stored at room temperature. That's an ideal temperature for the bad bacteria. Um, and just like the high boiling and all that stuff. No, once you, if you boil them, stick them in the fridge, you're good. Yeah, cool, it cool, cool. still feels cold, yeah, actually. You're so. the, like truly fine. Okay. And using a good recipe for canning is perfectly safe. Okay. That would be the worst way to die of life. <laughs> so how did he go? Well, he ate a pickle for a podcast uh, that he tried, he made, he made based off of a cookbook that his friend ordered on the internet. And who knew it could be bad? It was right next to the raccoon someone, recipe. Someone told him that it was going to give him botulism. He ate it anyway. Uh, was it a good pickle? No, it was a bad one. The point was that it was a bad pickle. They made it intentionally to be bad yeah. and then and ate it, and then just sort of vomited blood on the air. No, it causes paralysis. Cause, and then <laughs> was paralyzed. So your lungs stop working, and your heart stops working, and then you die. It's not great. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, don't do that. These aren't going to do that, though. The other thing is airtight, right? Yeah. Canned pickles have, like, a seal on them, and botulism likes air, uh, airless conditions. But that has that that's letting air and you're good. All right. Well, I, I promise. We might not is, like them, but we won't die. It is. I did put like one of those little rubber seals in the You're it's fine. We're fine. We're fine. All right, we're fine. <laughs> it was in the fridge. Between forty if it, it, it would have to be between forty and hundred and forty degrees. Okay. This has been the Dan's self preservation <laughs> instinct corner. Mm, they um, smell good, I have to say. You just took the lid off. That ooh. smells good to me. Okay. Um All right. did you get a waft? No, no. Let's... That's actually the first time that that lid's been off in like two weeks. Hmm. It does smell pretty good. Oh, yeah. See, you did it. We didn't fail. Somehow Aunt B, <laughs> yeah. with all her years of experience, failed to do what you guys managed to do in one try. Okay, so they say, what could she have possibly done? Because they say that the pickles taste like kerosene. They say like gasoline kerosene, so it... It has like a what, what? What would that taste be? I've never like. Can vinegar really spoil? No, no. I mean, it can. It's, well, whatever. Know. Not really. I don't know what kerosene tastes. This like. is what I like. I, I was when I said that I was kind of thinking like petroleum product. Mm. Which, like, here's an idea. What if she bought the cheap ass cucumbers that rode in on the back of a truck that had exhaust like going up to the cucumbers? Okay. And she always bought those cheap ass cucumbers, whereas Clara was buying the good stuff from the farmers market. <laughs> Where she was probably pulling them out of her own garden. Oh, she, she well. did say that, like, "Hey, stop skimping on cucumbers." So, huh? Maybe. Yeah. Or it, it would have to have like a metallic taste to it. I mean, if like, you're gonna if you're gonna make eight quarts, you gotta buy in bulk. Like that's. Yeah, maybe alum. Sense. Maybe maybe like using too much alum gives a metallic taste. She, I don't know. I did I didn't read that if you use. Too much alum, you will get kind of a bitter taste. Huh. Now, we only use a little bit more than a quarter teaspoon, even though right. we did that whole thing with the lumps and the, like, shaking it in there. We only, so I think we should be fine. So, I think what we've established is she fucked up big time on this pickle, right? Like, more so than we were really, it's not like she just did a bad job on the recipe. Like, she accidentally knocked over a thing of, like, metal shavings into the recipe. Yeah, there's yeah. no... It's impossible to have made it this bad, and to make it this bad 10, 11 years in a row. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, she had to work at making those bad. Yeah. So, new theory, she's intentionally poisoning <laughs> these people. She actually hates them. And every once a year, she's like, fuck you, Andy. Like, and... She knows exactly what she's doing. I like yeah, this maybe. idea. So, Alternate uh, ending. Everybody dies. Or, yeah. or she's like trying to teach the family a lesson about emotional honesty. And she's like, <laughs> she's, she's like, every year I'm going to give them terrible, terrible pickles that I know are bad. And Andy is eventually going to just open up to me emotionally and tell me that I've done a bad job at this thing because I'm poisoning his child. Cause he's also <sighs> giving it to his like very small son yep. who is and it's like at one point, uh, little Opie is just like, like, oh yeah, no, we're doing this so that I won't get sick. Yeah, like, I, you don't yeah. want me to. But Opie has actually gotten sick from these pickles before. Opie could have died. Yeah, like we we don't have a whole lot of vaccines right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 1960s slash the Great Depression. Yeah. If he gets if he gets tetanus, you're screwed. You could kill a kid by looking at him funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> their their immune systems were crap. Barney and Andy come up with this plan that they're gonna have to get rid of all of these pickles. Yeah. They're gonna get rid of them. 
and just replace them with store-bought pickles so that they can tolerate the pickles that are being served to them for the next couple of months. The line of thought is, uh, Andy goes like, well, I guess she thinks that just because it's homemade, it's automatically better than something that's store-bought. And then Barney goes like, well, store-bought would be better. And then he goes like, stop right there. I got, I'm up to a scheme. Really kind of off-brand for the Andy Griffith show, because the Andy Griffith show in general would, you think, would take the homemade is better argument. Yeah. So this is, like, a little little off for their, little, their standards. Little yeah, cons- I was personally offended. <laughs> <laughs> little, like, they're, yeah, they're, like, doing, a, like, a consumerist oh, yeah. shot across your bow. Be like, Sponsored by Big Pickle, that yeah. was. <laughs> Mr. Vlasic can do anything <laughs> you can. That's the name of the store. Right? Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's in the pocket. Oh, totally, it's classic. Yeah. yeah, no, big, uh, big pickle big paid this pickle, off. That's right. They're like, like, could get our store bought pickles. Maybe they're not as good, but also they won't make your child ill. <laughs> Worse than Clara's, better than at bees. Yeah, that's their tagline. Uh, so, in order to get rid of these pickles, uh, Barney and Andy just start giving them away. Just like every Barney sets up a roadblock. Yeah, and every time someone stops. He gives them a jar of pickles to take with them so, on the way out of town. Yeah, they swap out the pickles, uh, and then he gives them. They're they're they treat it like they're doing a crime, like the most like anything's been treated like they're doing a crime so far. <laughs> they're like like <laughs> we they... have to dispose of the evidence. It needs to be out of county lines because if we bury it in the woods, <laughs> she'll find it, which is crazy. This yes. is the most attention they've ever paid, including when they do actual crimes. Yeah, which is all the time. Yeah. They always do like like let's frame a man for murder. Do, 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 do. Like I'm gonna tell 14 people about this, and then they're like just trying to get rid of bad pickles. No one knows how fingerprinting works yet, so I'm just gonna put my hands over everything. <laughs> they're like for the pickles, we're gonna create a secret code language that only you and I can understand to transmit very vital pickle information. But so there's this scene where a guy is like driving out of town, and Barney's like. Hey, so I'm pulling you over. You did a great job driving. I see that you have Ohio plates. Oregon. Oregon plates. Uh-huh. Yeah, as an Oregonian, I, I feel the urge to correct that. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I see that you have Oregon plates. I'm just going to uh, give you this bag, and what you're going to want to do is drive very far away before you open it. <laughs> By how paranoid would you be in that moment? Would you be like, yeah. so a cop just pulled me over, gave me a strange bag, and told me to keep driving? What am I about to be framed for? Yep. Like, that was a serious abuse of police power. Oh, just you like... think that was an abuse of police power? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the show, Amanda. It was. I was like, That's par for the course around here. <laughs> the guy was, like, took it in such stride, and I'd be like, all right, so this bag contains, like, a hand, a gun, <laughs> or like a kilo of cocaine. That Oregon dude was just like, okay, I'm I'm stuffed shirt and white, and you are also stuffed shirt and white, so this has to be fine. I'm mildly befuddled by this. This is, I'm not upset in any way or concerned. I'm just kind of, I didn't plan on having this strange jar, so it's fine. I guess goodbye. I'm, I'm mad that you've held me up for two minutes. I'm off schedule now. <laughs> now I'll never make it to Salem, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> the place we're all going all the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they get rid of all of them. Um, then what happens next? Honestly, this is a real plot-heavy episode. And I didn't do show notes for this one, because pickles. Uh <laughs> You got all the manual labor I'm doing for this went into making this jar of pickles that I'm just now like <laughs> staring at. Uh, so after this, uh, uh, they they start like just eating the pickles constantly right, they're, and they're... telling Aunt B how great they are. Wait, right. did Barney already go out of town? Was that before that? Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes. So the big thing is that uh, is that Barney uh, is leaving town, and that's like he's leaving town with a big duffel bag that's full of the the, the suspect pickles. And Aunt B is like, oh, Barney, I'm mildly interested in this. Why are you leaving? Uh, also, before this, Andy explains to Opie, he's like, Opie, so do you understand why we need to lie? And Opie just goes like, yeah, so I'll stop getting sick. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> so that is like an explicit thing that is established. Like, I don't want you to be like in bed for three days with <laughs> stomach cramps and internal bleeding. Oh, you're basically just saying, yes, Opie, uh, 
your aunt's feelings are much more important than your well-being. <laughs> I, oh, Good lesson for this child. Opie, I have a way to preserve your aunt's feelings and stop you from shitting blood this year. <laughs> oh, boy, Pa! <laughs> yeah. Golly gee. So uh, there's the big, uh, the big lie of, like, Barney's going out to meet his cousin who lives in another town. And then Barney just sort of Canadian girlfriends this. Where he just like <laughs> oh, yeah. over defends. And like Andy's like trying to like chase him out of the room where he's just like, oh, you never met him. And uh, he doesn't have a phone line. So don't try to call. Why is my Barney just turning into like Mickey Mouse? <laughs> Seems accurate. Yeah. It might be better. It might be worse. I don't know. Uh, don't try to call him because, uh, you know, he doesn't have a phone line. He... And, and Aunt B says basically, like, why would I ever <laughs> do that? I don't think of you when you're not in front of me. <laughs> you don't matter. I tried Serves... to kill you already. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of town. Serves me right for being mildly interested in your affairs. Yeah. And, and so that's his cover story for him getting rid of all those pickles and having them in a giant bag. He gets rid of them. He distributes them through drivers from all the way from Oregon to Nova Scotia, which makes me wonder where exactly geographically is Mayberry. Yeah, I was like, curious about how, that. Why do all these travelers have to come through town? <laughs> You're in rural North Carolina. There's no freeway. What is happening here? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, I, and, old timey highways? I have no idea. Yeah, so uh, they've gotten rid of it, but... Clara comes into the jailhouse and has, like, a little, like, touching conversation with Andy, where basically she says that she gets really excited about these pickles that she makes every year. It gives her a sense of purpose. It Like, every year she wins that pickle contest, and maybe it seems silly, but for her it's very important. It, like, makes her feel... Alive, essentially. Yeah, she's, I, it, it, it's like, my husband's dead, so pickles are really getting me through the day. So, like, they're really, like, leaning hard into, like, the sad spinster oh, motif. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there's this, like, sad violin. I'll play a clip here, honestly. But there's, like, the sad violin playing in the background. And then Andy, like, has this weird epiphany. He's like, oh, well, things matter to <laughs> other people. You're getting ahead of it a little bit. Uh, because the reason she's doing this is because Ampy is like, okay, so these guys are really sucking down my pickles. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, really sucking down my pickles. Uh, these pickles must be incredible because people are now happy to eat them. So I'm going to enter them in the pickle contest. Uh, and, and I think I have a shot this year. Right, so she's going to enter her store-bought pickles that she doesn't know are store-bought. She thinks she finally got the recipe right. And this is yeah. threatening Clara, and which also, like... Aren't there other competitors for Clara to worry about? But now she's, like, really worried, like, oh, Aunt B's in the running. I should have some real competition this year. And Andy realizes, oh, yeah, it's not it's not right for us to enter store-bought pickles in this. But yeah. here's the thing. They could have just run the store-bought pickles and still lost, because I'm assuming that Clara's pickles are better than store-bought, right? Yeah. They didn't have to do any of this. Yet more store pickles propaganda because they're like, no, store pickles are going to blow homemade pickles out of the water. Yeah, everyone's yes. buying into that. Were you just Again, becoming furious? I was. I was. I truly was like, come on, guys. What is the message that you're trying to send here? Like, there's no question if you've had a store-bought pickle versus a homemade pickle, that they're in, better if they're in, homemade. In the episode about artisanal pickle making, they're just like, suck it, artisanal pickle <laughs> totally. making. Totally. Yeah, I'm serious. This was sponsored by Vlasic. <laughs> I would not I wonder be what the... I bet there weren't rules. It was like the fire festival of its time. Like there were no rules about who could sponsor it without stating that they were a sponsor. Oh, oh, we've definitely. we've seen Andy hawking cigarettes and <laughs> stuff before. Like, I I feel like they had just invented product placement at this point. Yeah. Like, what if an ad, gentlemen, gentlemen, what if an ad wasn't an ad? I, like, yeah, yeah. I'm seriously. I wonder if Vlasic was still was kicking around then. They were just. They really wanted to like chase you off the idea of trying to make pickles on your own. They're like, making pickles uh, on yourself is impossible. Yeah. You're gonna fuck it up. Don't even try. Just go get store-bought pickles because all your friends will laugh at you behind your back. Uh, let, me, let me pontificate semi-seriously <laughs> here. So this is post-war America. Mm-hmm. We are more and more consumerist. The idea that you would make anything homemade, that's pre-war. That's some Great Depression bullshit. Mm-hmm. And so we're now in the 1960s where 
it's like encouraged that you should just be stimulating yeah. the American economy, go out and spend and spend and spend, buy that stuff, buy that stuff. And it's the reason we think it's extra weird is that this is the Andy Griffith show, which has no idea what year it's in. But remember, it is still 1961. So yeah, that pervasive, like, buy from the factory, get it right home attitude is really coming in heavy and hot. So yeah, that is kind of less like thinking that Aunt B's or Clara's methods, they come from another generation. That's a good point. Oh, I... This is now a conspiracy theory that I wholeheartedly <laughs> believe in about pickles. Do you encounter that a lot when you're teaching people fermentation? Like, a little bit of resistance in that it's just, like, old-minded? Or I guess people, I they sign up it, for your courses. It's, yeah, it's kind of, like, hip again. You know what I mean? It, like, came around. Like, fermentation is thousands of years old, literally. And uh, people were doing it, really, into, like, the 50s. And then kind of started to fall out of favor. And Right around I, this time, 1961? Um, probably, yeah. Like, my grandma's generation definitely did it. And then, like, my mom's generation definitely did not. It's the 60s. We don't have to do this anymore. Yeah. And now our generation yeah. is desperate for authenticity. It's totally true. Yeah. yeah it's, like, labor-saving. I mean, anything that was labor-saving was considered positive. And, like, that's part of, like, women's lib and all that stuff. Like, women didn't have to be chained to the stove. My mother's very proud of my <laughs> work. Um, but like, yeah, you like for sure. I think that makes absolute sense. That and the evil product placement that was definitely happening. No, we. So, so I think that is this our first conspiracy theory on the on the show that last oh. time we recorded, we decided that Barney was part of the Kennedy assassination. What are <laughs> right, you talking yeah, about? Okay, wow. yep, 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 that yep, was yep. yesterday, my man. <laughs> yeah, 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 we yeah. did that twenty four <laughs> hours ago. Sorry, sorry. The first conspiracy theory that I believe. <laughs> no, I think I think you're right. I think you nailed it. All right, so once he realizes that things matter to other people... <laughs> yeah, once, once he remembers empathy... Yeah, Andy realizes, all right, well, we can't enter these store-bought pickles in the competition because they'll win and that's going to make Clara sad. Yeah. But we also can't let Aunt B know that we lied to her. So the only thing we got to do, I guess, we're going to have to eat all these pickles, all these store-bought pickles, so that Aunt B is going to have to make another batch of her bad pickles. And he goes to Barney and Opie with this, and Barney says, what the hell is wrong with you? Are you nuts? And then we get... How can you ask this of me? Yeah. I can't do this. If... I would take a bullet for you, yeah. Andy. But, but this? This is a bridge too far. That went to straight to Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> it's a surprisingly difficult impression. Yeah. Yeah. You go the wrong way, Muppet. Yeah. You go, like, too wrong the other way, just Jimmy Stewart. Just Jimmy yeah. Stewart. Just could, Jimmy. could get into some Hepburn, too, with, the like, the voice waiver. <laughs> oh, Kim. Do you I, want it? I, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> uh, uh, nope, can't do it. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> right, well, just, just do the word pickle with your best party fight. Well, Andy. Nope, I'm definitely solid, going cow- I'm going to go cowboy. Yeah. No. So, kind, of, kind of went into uh, yeah, You got the, uh, the that, that, like, back of the throat aspect yeah, yeah. of it. It's right. a surprisingly difficult impression. Yeah, that's, that's tricky. So we're treated to a montage, which is honestly pretty funny. Yeah. The montage of Opie and Barney and Andy sucking down pickles, uh, and they like mon they also do a montage of all their different theme musics essentially. Like yeah. Andy gets the the, the fish and hope and then we get to that like annoying like Pop Goes the Weasel theme that Opie always has. We don't do Barney's fascist march theme song, yeah. which is fine. But, like, I I like the music for this. They're actually, like, overlapping shots on top of each other. Some double exposure. It's, like, some pretty advanced stuff for the time. This, like, montage of them eating pickles. It's pretty funny because, you know, even if they're good pickles, you can only eat so many pickles before you're just like, I'm done with this. I'm so proud of them for figuring out montages because, like, two episodes ago, they would have literally shown every single, like, at normal rates. Just gonna cut into this with a fork and knife. They would have just been like, boys, we get to write off this half of the episode. We have to demonstrate in real time that they ate 30 pickles because otherwise home audiences won't put it together. So they eat their, their pickles to death. And I gotta say, like, that's pretty funny. 
It would have been more funny if they had come up with a plot contrivance where they have to eat the bad pickles, right? Right. Like, the gag would have been they have to eat all of the bad pickles and get rid of them. And they could have done the same thing. They could also have taken the pickles and hidden those pickles or gotten those pickles out of town. Yeah. They were, like, suddenly convinced that they had to eat them. you're right. Why don't they just get rid of them? I don't know. Just give passing motors. Take a jar to the jail and bury... I mean, the burying thing was the wisest decision from the start. Make a little compost pile, guys. Come on. There's nothing stopping them from just... Doing the same thing over again. Yeah. Do they say it's like they don't have time? Maybe because have... the other ones they wanted desperately not to eat, but these they were like, fine, we can eat them. Yeah. Because they, they were delicious plastic pickles, <laughs> not <laughs> shitty homemade ones. I still don't understand why they can't just like throw them away. Like, yeah. Just, just, can she smell the, yeah. this, the vinegar of a, of a spilled pickle from like 50 miles? Maybe yeah. it has a lake. Just canoe <laughs> out of the middle of the lake. Like you're killing Fredo in Godfather yeah. 2. And Damn just, it, you beat me to the Fredo reference. And just <laughs> dump the pickle. Yeah. It's a mystery. <laughs> the easiest cry. It's a real mystery. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ambie is shocked. She's like, wow, you all wolfed down those pickles. Another eight quarts of pickles gone. <laughs> Ambie's got to know, right? Ambie's got to know that these people did not eat 16 quarts of pickles in two days. Yeah. She, even if... She thought they were good pickles. I would say, are you you okay? <laughs> yeah. Like, are, are you, like, malnourished in some way? Like, she's totally fucking with them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. She's, oh, yeah. She's absolutely in on this. She, I, I, my, my, like, headcanon is now, like, every year she's just like, just, just say the pickles are bad. Like, what are you doing? And then this year she's like, what extremes can I push these idiots to? Where they'll ev- finally just say that the pickles are bad. Like, I'm entering the contest. Tell me the pickles are bad so I don't embarrass myself in uh, in this. And then, like, she, this just ends with her being massively disappointed in her family. Yeah. But, wait, she does only agree to enter the pickles in the contest after she eats one while they're trying to fake eat them. Right. So she tasted it and knew it was good, and then she was like, oh, okay, I'll enter these. Had she, like, tried one of her pickles before? I don't think we actually saw her eat her own pickles. I've gone 11 years without eating a single one of these things that I've made. I just make them, folks. I don't eat them. Don't put that thing anywhere near my face. That makes your pickle delivery at the beginning all the more callous. She's like, I don't know how these taste. Just... But yeah. let's, let's roll the dice in your little mouths. Rule number one of cooking, Aunt B. Taste your own food. Yeah. Just, like... Just kind of going into this blind. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I don't get... So I I have a little bit of conflict on that. On the one hand, I think she is fucking with them. And on the other hand, like, she genuinely didn't seem ready to submit them to the contest until she tasted that they were actually decent. All right. I I mean, Vlasics were actually decent. (laughs) Yeah. All right, so let's let's just get this to its natural conclusion. Aunt B (laughs) enters her terrible... Her kerosene pickles into the uh, contest. Clara enters her regular pickles into the contest. Her pickles of self-worth, if you will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Her entire self-esteem is banking on this. And what happens <laughs> if, like, I think I think that, uh, according to the ultra-reliable Mayberry Wiki, uh, Aunt B's entry number in the contest was 11, Clara's was number 4. There were six other, no, <laughs> nine other contestants. I know how numbers work. Yeah. There were nine other contestants, at least. Why was she not worried about any of them? What yeah. would happen if one of them won? Like, if... Emma Brand had upped her game over the past year. Maybe she, that was Clara's off off camera work. She was going from house to house telling her sob story. <laughs> oh, she, just every like every husband and father and brother <laughs> and like and daughter in the in the entire. She was like, "If I don't win this contest, I'm going to fucking die. I swear to God." I feel like she maybe had a different story for every family ta- <laughs> tailored to their particular sensitivities. Oh, my, my. And, and when she was when she was pulling that like psyop shit with uh. Aunt be at the beginning of the episode she was psychologically breaking oh, yeah. everyone yeah. else oh, at the yeah. same time yeah, yeah she is, she's the mastermind of this episode clara my dead son billy used to like these pickles before he died gruesomely <laughs> anyway <A> botulism somehow <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> weirdly <laughs> enough <laughs> anyway see you at the pickle contest hope i'm not in your head this will kill me Pickles are the only connection I have to the world. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, this is my actual job, and I would not make statements that were that strong about my relationship to pickles. <laughs> she, holy shit, Claire is a sociopath. Yep. Everyone on this show is. Yeah, me too. a fucking lector. Yeah. yeah. 
but with uh, pickles. <laughs> but with pickles. Well, she wins. All yeah. is right with the world. The judges have this funny little moment where they eat the pick, like the bad cucumbers, and they go, "Oh God, what is this?" They have to like go wash their faces off and you know, just off screen in a water fountain. And finally, Aunt B's like, "Well, I guess this doesn't matter." Uh, Clara seems to be happy, and as long as my family likes it, right, Andy? <laughs> you do like it, right? Then everything's okay. And Andy's like, "I love it," and she's like, "Great." Slides it across. Eat the pickle, Andy. Eat it while I look at you in the eyes. <laughs> look me right here and eat the pickle. Look me in the eyes, eat the pickle, and tell me how great it is. <laughs> you coward. I also feel like the thing with the judging was a little weird. Like, that was susceptible to Clara's intervention because everybody knew their judging position and the judges were doing it right in front of them. So, I don't know. That seemed like that could easily be kind of a cooked contest. It was not a double blind. Like, no, there was yeah. no double blind aspect to this. How do, how do, uh, Pickle contest work. I actually have no idea. I, I go to, I actually teach usually at the, um, at the Pennsylvania State Fair, but I have never seen the judges like judge the contest, which do happen still to this day. Is it like, does it happen like behind closed doors? Like they take the pickles? Like, I don't know. I would kind of assume so. They actually put badges on the jars. Like the jars are displayed out in public and they put badges on them. I don't think there are people in the room while they're tasting. I could definitely be wrong about that because I've never gone to the judging portion, but that seemed, I mean, just knowing how like diabolical Clara is, that seemed especially problematic to me. Like she bribed the judges or blackmailed the judges or had, or had just done one of already Stop. done her bullshit like oh, oh woe me. is me yeah. I'm sh- you guys judge how you see fit but i will kill myself tomorrow yeah. if i don't win i swear don't, don't let that sway you just by the way have you noticed that there's a gun range right next to the pickle contest <laughs> crazy anyway bye <laughs> uh very mentally healthy yeah claire is not a well one <laughs> Uh, and that's it. That's the episode. That's a very popular episode for some reason. It's fine. We, we, the, the whole thing, they could have just buried the pickles in the woods. I know. It's fine. It's, what would they have done, though? It's yeah. a mildly funny episode. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then the stinger is that uh, they're like, okay, well, in the future, we're going to be more emotionally honest with, uh, with her or whatever the fuck they're resolving to improve upon. And then... Uh, Barney, like, spreads some of the jam that's on the table and says that it smells like airplane glue. Uh, I missed that. Yeah. And then they're like, huh, that's weird. Opie must have left airplane glue out when he was making a model. And then they open a cupboard and it's full of a new thing of, like, preserves. And they're like, oh, my God, no. (laughs) And then just, like, cut to black where it's, like, like, a new reign of terror. So it's not just that she sucks at making pickles. She sucks at making, I guess, any sort of preserves like she can't can maybe she just doesn't know how to can she's using the wrong canning recipes or does she like she has like contaminated cans maybe maybe she didn't sanitize her jars it it can happen what you do by boiling them you do boil them yeah yeah Yeah. we were actually pretty worried about that because like i didn't boil this jar why are you doing this again (laughs) for canned pickles and fridge pickles different universe of danger you're you're fine no one's gonna i will eat a pickle to prove to you how sure oh really well that's a great (laughs) segue so before we do ratings so i've been like i've been getting gradually hungrier over the course of this so dan and i did make the recipe for aunt b's kerosene cucumbers you can find us watching it or you can find us doing it if you go to our youtube channel is it called that in the book it's called that aunt b's kerosene cucumbers wow but here's the thing like none of it seemed really that bad it was like one hot pepper like some garlic some pickling spices which i think i used like allspice and mustard seed and like pretty standard stuff so i don't see how this can be that gross but here we go yeah here's some bad pickles i guess did so, you add the kerosene? I, I did not add the what? kerosene. So I guess the worst part about this would be, like, I didn't actually have onions, so I just used granulated onion. Right. So, I think that's fine. Do what you're doing. All right, Dan's grabbing the first one. Mm, it's an adequate pickle. Hmm. I'd have that on a sandwich. Yeah, it's good. Totally good. Yeah. It's this is little, anticlimactic. Yeah, a little sweeter than I normally <laughs> like. I was really hoping these would be disgusting, but as we found out early, 
you can't really fuck up pickles. That They're bad. pretty good. I yeah, like that. It's yeah, good. it's actually good. It's totally good. good. Mm. Shit, we made good pickles. You made fuck. good pickles. This ain't good podcasting. These aren't even going to kill you. Uh, we should have like. I don't know, put, like, mustard in it or something. Mustard is really good in pickles. Damn it! I, there's mustard seed <laughs> mustard in it. Seeds We're really culinary common, geniuses! Common pickling spice. <laughs> I, I was just meant, like, like... Oh, squeeze and mustard? Like, squeeze also just, like, just, like, some, I feel like that'd be pretty delicious, wrenches. too. Fuck! I, I'm a fucking, like, like savant <laughs> at pickling. You can't help but be yeah. amazing. Amanda, what are some of your favorite recipes from this book? I just flipped open to mac and kimchi, and that sounds delicious. Yeah, that's pretty good. I there are a lot of the krauts I really like a lot. Um, there's a roasted garlic kraut. So, like, generally you don't want to cook things for ferments, but if you're putting a little bit of a cooked thing into a big batch of raw things, um, it will drop the pH appropriately to make it safe. It is fucking delicious. I put it on everything. You know, my pickle recipe, I'm pretty proud of my basic cucumber pickle recipe because that's like the hardest thing to ferment and to can, by the way. My canning friends have told me the same thing. It's like the one thing that like is problematic. Like it's where you can get stuff soft in the middle or have You're doing the botulism risk? I do no botulism. Fermentation has no association with botulism. Like it's the natural enemy of clostridium. I want to put it that in the index for Amanda's book uh, under safety. There's botulism, and botulism is mentioned on page 13, 14, 34, and 42. It's probably four times in this book. This is because everybody confuses canning pickles with fermenting pickles, and in canning, botulism is a risk. In fermentation, it's just not. There's a ten thousand year archaeological record of vegetable fermentation and there's never been a case of foodborne illness associated with it it's safer than like eating a raw vegetable but right. canning you have to like know what you're doing or yeah. listen to someone who knows what they're doing i really like that there's a version of this that's like you're playing with fire <laughs> like there's the high risk high reward version of pickling it's true it's like, it is true dancing with the devil like, while making these pickles yeah you can't you cannot fuck around with canned pickles yeah. you like really have to follow it it's like baking if you're being like completely insane, like you cannot be like, I'm just going to use a cup of baking soda instead. Like you can't do that. And you, if you're baking cookies, right. And you can't like change the salt ratio. You can't change the vinegar ratio. You can't change the cook time for canned pickles. And there's probably like people that like flew too close to the sun <laughs> and trying to make the perfect canned pickle recipe and just like killed three judges at a contest. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely could have killed themselves for sure. I mean, most of those stories are like pretty old where like people were probably more subsistence and they were like, I don't have the right materials, so I'm just going to use this. And then they were like, oh, my 13 children have all succumbed <laughs> to botulism. Tell me about the I, pumpkin spice kimchi. Pumpkin spice kimchi, my PSK. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just kimchi, but instead of you, there's a lot of different kinds of kimchi. So um, kimchi isn't just made with cabbage. It's made with a lot of um, other kinds of vegetables. Oh, and in that oh, case, okay. I actually made it with pumpkin as the like the base vegetable so there's you know all the traditional kimchi things in there hot and spicy things and onions and um gochugaru but it's the base ingredient is pumpkin what is gochugaru it's like the red spice powder that goes that's like the traditional kimchi spice oh, okay cool 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 so that's our episode uh, uh, we, we gotta do some ratings okay oh um, yeah okay so in terms of so there's two ratings there's andy rating for how good this episode is and five rating for how morally reprehensible <laughs> i find it okay uh 10 is maximum. But yeah. Okay. All right. So Andy, Andy ratings. Um, let's say, let's say yeah. I go first. Oh, I go first? Yeah. Ooh, I don't so, know. Right, we'll, start, we'll start with the Andy. So All scale right. of 1 to 10, how much did you actually enjoy watching this episode? I liked it. I mean, I had there were some problematic things. But yeah, I would say, you know, 7 or an 8, 7.8. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I feel like I would also give it about a 7. Like, I, it, it made me laugh a couple of times. I really like that montage. Uh, there's some good bits in it. Plot-wise, it's a lot more plot-heavy than a lot of the Andy Griffith stuff is, so... Yeah, I'll do... I was gonna say six, but yeah, fuck it. I'll do, like, an... I'll do a seven. Yeah. Again, we all agree. Yeah. Season two, baby. We, we need to start, like, writing these down, because the first person who does it always makes a really good point. <laughs> and, uh... And, like, all just sort of, like, group thought behind them. Mm. Uh, all right. So, meter, which is just like, how gross is this? How much did it shill for Big Pickle? Oh, it, that's a 10, motherfuckers. <laughs> like that, I, seriously, they definitely had Vlasic on retainer. And, it, and also, that's not even including all of their machinations to get the pickles out of town. Clara being like a stone cold bitch. Aunt B, <laughs> like completely out of control with her fam- familial manipulation. Yeah, that, this gets a 10. I, 
I think like it really was like a shot across the bow of your just entire like pursuit. This is so funny to me though, because like we've seen so much worse on this show. Yeah. I'm just like for me, I was like, "Yep, that's just that's every day." But, but like um, emotionally, like there's a lot of emotional digging going on like, there. We've never watched an episode where it's been like, "Hey, on this episode of Andy Griffith Show, Andy tells Martin Schneider to fuck himself." Like it's never been like, like it's never been like, "Hey, uh, hey Barney, hey Andy, you know what sucks ass audio production?" <laughs> like, like, yeah, it does. Like. She has been personally and directly slighted by this episode. Also true. true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Fair point. Fair point. That we've been through season two for so long. And season two sucks. (laughs) It's just all very bad writing. Uh, And it's like we're in a desert. We we know there's a promised land where the lady from I Dream of Genie is going to show up. And everyone's going to get very gross and horny. And then, like, (laughs) many crimes are going to happen. And we're looking forward to like, intensely. But for right now, we're here. And here, I'm going to go with, like, my my five, the five of me or calibration is so far off now. Uh, I'm going to give this, like, a, I'm going to give it a six just for Clara alone, honestly. (laughs) She's a psychopath. Clara's sociopathy uh, warrants a four for me. That, <laughs> thank God she uh, took up pickles as a life pursuit because she could wipe this town off the map. Just like one by one Hannibal Lecter <laughs> her way through this community. Uh, we're, it's a mercy that she took to pickling. <laughs> okay, so that is it for this episode. Uh, don't forget you can find us online if you want to get in touch with us. Uh, we are at twitter.com slash breakmayberry, breakingmayberry.com. BreakingMayberry at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at Schneid Remarks. That's S-C-H-N-E-I-D Remarks. Uh, someone's chuckling at my my wonderful pun. <laughs> the first person ever. <laughs> I'm at the Luds, 2Ds. Uh, Amanda, where can people find you and your stuff? I'm at Fickle Foods on all the Instagram, P-H-I-C-K-L-E. And that's it. Okay. Right. www.fickle.com. Okay, we will have links to this book wherever it can be purchased. Uh, really, wherever it gives you the most share. Yeah. Tell us where to put it. We'll have links uh, down below in the show notes. Uh, don't forget, if you like what you're hearing, to share, like, subscribe, rate, review, etc., etc. Get us in the earbuds of other people. That's about it. These are actually some really good pickles that we're all going to munch on yeah. as soon as we're done recording. That's about it for us. We'll see y'all down at the fishing hole. Yeah, come back.